Hey, Tarek! What? We're already late. Oh, fuck! What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we are running super late, like always. Well, that's mostly because of your fucking shit co-worker. Yeah, so he came in late, I had to stay until he came in, but it's okay, we're... Gotta go see what Marvel claims is the most anticipated movie of the 2020 summer. Well, isn't that what they say about every one of their movies? Probably, but, you know, ever since Joss Whedon had Bruce Banner motorboat her titties in a kid's movie, I've always wanted to see a solo Black Widow film. Me too, man. <laughs> It's my dream come true. So now that we've gotten our tickets and there's minutes left of the preview, uh, we're just gonna keep this real brief. Um, it's nice to be able to go into this blind, you know, cause I haven't seen any of the uh, trailers really besides the initial teaser. So there's not really a whole lot that I know about this movie besides it's a prequel, obviously. And yeah, I've just missed the days where you could kind of just go into a comic book film completely blind with absolutely really no expectations or, you know, critics' reviews to sway you in a bias before you enter the theater and waste your money. No, I'm just going in this completely blind, and I am. I feel like it's going to be good. Probably not exceptionally amazing, but that's okay. It's... Yeah, it's been a long time coming for a Black Widow fucking movie, and I think... Better late than never, I guess. For real, for real. So, um, I think we've gone on a little bit of a mindless tangent, so let's just go in and uh, see what this is all about. Paul? Huh? What you doing, Tyrick? Uh, making a nice little nacho meal for myself. Uh, I ordered the nachos and cheese from Taco Bell along with the... I forget what it's called. But the, the, the nacho yeah, mother box. Yeah, the nacho box. Limited time. It's pretty good. I'm enjoying myself. And uh, put that in. Well, get a nice little shot of it. You know. I had a nice little glory money shot of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see you just dumped your nachos and cheese on top of the nacho <laughs> grande. I sure did. <laughs> I need more chips, though, so it's all right. Did they give you a fork or a spork? Nope. Lovely. But, yeah, we just got back from our screening of uh, Black Widow. And it's definitely a movie. <laughs> it's absolutely a feature film that you can watch on the big screen. Wouldn't you agree, Tarek? I would agree. Um, is that as high a praise as you'll probably give it? Oh, no, no. There's, there's definitely plenty of things that worked for me. And I'd say, honestly, just as much that didn't. Okay. But I want to start off with a little something unorthodox. I want to talk about the post credit scene for a little bit. Yeah. Keeping it spoiler free, uh, just real quick, if this is really where they want this direction for the phase four to go, good luck. <laughs> uh, I, I don't envy your uphill battle, um, but I can't recall the last time an MCU film ended on such a sour note with audiences as far as its end credit scene. The uh, the audience we were with did not like it. They did not respond well to it at all. And the guys behind us were literally like, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> I mean, like, there wasn't a single, like, hooray from anyone in that theater. No, everyone, everyone felt like it was a waste of time. Yeah, um, and I, I had my own issues with just it as far as, like, the structure of that scene went. I'm not gonna like act like you know it's not possible for them to make a, a fulfilling story where where they want to go or no. with the breadcrumbs they left <clears throat> no it's definitely possible it's just I've just I think it's very interesting of an observation that people did not respond well to this time to an end credit scene because I I think for every MCU film that's ever come out even the ones with Howard the Duck like in Guardians of the Galaxy you know, people were like, eh, that's fine, but, you know, eh. This one, they were seriously like, we do not like that. Right, this is this is dumb. This is taking a stupid turn. And... Right. But, on to the actual movie. I thought the first act was actually great. 
Like the setup. And yeah, the story setup and the premise for the entire film and where it took place. I was so on board. A little thing that, like, you know, began to irk me just as the film started out. It had those big location text fonts that was in, um, it was Civil War, where, like, every location just had this huge font on screen letting you know, like, hey, we're in Ohio! Yeah, they do that every time throughout the entire movie. But the reason why I don't think it's, a like, a complaint or, you know, something wrong with the film, it's supposed to establish, like, which film it directly follows. And I don't think it's a spoiler to say that this film is supposed to pick up immediately after Civil War. And, yeah, I was like, I want to see what happens to Natasha during the time that Cap and Iron Man had their little bromance break up until the beginning of Infinity War, because that's just a big period of time where we didn't really get a whole lot from Black Widow's character. No, not at all. And then, well, we finally got it a little too late, but... Yeah, it's very much something where I think this movie should have come out years ago, if you ask me. Yeah. It actually would have probably made her return in Infinity War very, very, very exciting. But, you know, they decided, hey... Let's not make a Black Widow movie that'll make a lot of money for a few years until the world shuts down and we have no other ideas. Basically, that's... Yeah. I just, off the bat, I want to say, like, I know I, I've been sound... I've sounded very condescending so far, but... I was pretty let down with this film. I just want to get that out of the way. I'm going to get through everything that I did like about the film, and I'm really going to stress, like, that there were legitimately things I thought were great and definitely could have and should have been great about this film. Uh, some of the characters, Black Widow, of course, does a great job, but I think this is Scarlett Johansson's just best performance thus far in the MCU. Oh, she probably, gives it her all. Yeah. yeah, probably, you know, the last time we'll ever see her in the MCU, but I do think this is the best version of Natasha we have ever seen on film. As far as just, you know, the depth, mm -hmm. Scarlett Johansson's actual performance, and as well as her writing. Right. Well, it better be. I mean, with how <laughs> much attention be. is focused with on. With 200 yeah. fucking million dollars put into yeah. this shit, yeah. It better be worth a damn. Mm -hmm. But yeah, everything about Black Widow herself, it worked for me. It, it definitely felt like a fulfilling story for fans that wanted to see Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow brought to film. In her own solo film. Uh, I thought Red Guardian, very, very surprised with how much I enjoyed his character. Um, he definitely worked as a good comic relief, but a natural comic relief. Wasn't doing it too much. Just kind Yeah, of... it, his humor wasn't forced. It felt like it mm -hmm. came from a natural, just dipshit person. <laughs> yeah. You know? he's, he's and that's so... what made it great. He's... He's selfish, but he at least cares about his family. Yeah. So absolutely, his he's the most selfish person we've probably seen in the MCU. But goddamn, does he leave an impression on you? <laughs> he's got some kind of charm to it. It's I think it's just maybe the actor that kind of brought it to it. Which David Harbour is his name. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with what he's in, but but. Uh, the villain of the movie, there are actually a few villains, but I thought both of them worked very well. Uh, the, the big, you know, overseer guy, Drek, or Drakov, mm -hmm. I thought he had a very good presence in the film. You know, obviously, he's not in it a whole lot, so people might complain that, oh, he's just going to be another disposable MCU villain. He's definitely not as prevalent in the film as what some people might have wanted. However, I think, you know, he's just meant to represent, you know, just some kind of abusive figure to keep women, you know, that he essentially just, you know, traffics into his Red Room organization to do his bidding. I think his entire presence just in that regard is like Killmonger, where he's just, you know, him like standing like just face to face with, you know, the hero. It, it gets... There's some tension there, you know, and I Absolutely. think it works very well for the film. But I think Taskmaster undoubtedly stole the show as far as the villain goes. Mm-hmm, definitely. 
definitely much more threatening. And I think all the scenes involving Taskmaster really add something the MCU has desperately needed for a while, and that one word is violence. <laughs> right. All the uh, the punches, the hits, the it's really it feels impactful. It feels like it hurts. Yeah, it feels yeah. like something that like actually would leave a fuck ton of bruises and shit on you versus you know you know in some shit like civil war every hero is just getting punched by super beings and you know you see natasha and cliff fighting and it's just <laughs> buddy buddies <laughs> uh, yeah i'm making a i'm gonna pull my punches with you you're my buddy <laughs> right i mean like because even like the earlier other mcu films like it's like when they're punching the robots or like some aliens it's it's very much you know like you know the action in the star wars prequels it's just fluff you know it's it's emotionless fluff and i i don't want to say emotionless as being like you know the scenario doesn't have any weight to it it's just the action has always felt very cartoonish so it was refreshing to see some actual grit some actual bite to the punches you know some actual impact that you felt from them I'll touch more on that in a later. It gets undermined by quite a few things. And that's something that definitely irked me a lot about this film. But one thing that definitely did not was its pacing. I thought this movie had very good pacing for the most part. It did not feel over two hours. It just kept moving, boom, 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 especially in the first act. Right. It had a very fast pace, but it wasn't just assaulting you with information, I would say. It was very much just, hey... You know, this it's a very fast-paced momentum story. You know, we're going along for a fun adventure. And a, you know, I guess it's not a fun adventure, you know, for Natasha. But no. She, for the audience, it's a, it's definitely a fun ride, I would say. Right. We're, we're on the run, like with our... So. Mm -hmm. And as far as the tone of the film goes, um, I very much appreciate it, especially in the first act. I know I keep saying first act might give you a little foreshadowing of, you know, what my complaints are to come. But I appreciate that the mood kind of went for a more paranoid sort of thing. You know, she's on the run from General Ross, and she's always looking over her shoulder. And I think that mood works so fucking well for the character of Black Widow. Mm -hmm. Paranoid, you know, scared, basically. Mm -hmm. Just always, yeah. like, on the run, being a fugitive now. And she's always been, like, you know, a fugitive, a secret agent. But now just, it's never been on this level oh, before. Oh, yeah. I think what helps with establishing the mood and the tone of the film are the film's song choices, which I also thought were really, 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 really good for the film. Even its OST impressed me, and I think that's something that I always found rare for the MCU, is for it to have a very memorable OST besides the Avengers theme. I wouldn't say, you know, this is an OST that I'll go out of my way to listen to, like, all the time, but, you know, I can appreciate when there's effort put into, you know, a, a film score. So you like the, uh, like the intro song that played, uh, yeah. like Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah, it a, wasn't performed by Nirvana, but... It's a very good cover yeah. of that song, and it establishes the mood and setting perfectly, because yeah, it's a 90s song, it's a Nirvana song, but it's sung in a very contemporary way, so you can montage through at the very beginning during the intro s credits, uh, just heard, uh, you know complete psychiatric reconditioning and uh, brainwashing and obedience and all that it definitely creates a tone we've not felt in the MCU that I really 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 appreciated as someone that has seen the tropes for MCU films to like try and copy how James Gunn masterfully selected his music for Guardians of the Galaxy it's like hey I want to put a retro rock song in mine, even if it feels fucking out of place. For me, that's kind of where the MCU started to go, so it was very nice to see something that fit the scene. It was almost like the complete opposite, really. Like, mm -hmm. It wasn't playful, fun, this is good time, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I agree with that. Decent action, really good song choices and OST. Um, very, very, very good performances from several different characters and cast. Is that it? <laughs> Is that really it, though? Because I am very struggling to think of something else that I loved or even really liked about this film without delving into spoilers. Mm. 
Yeah, that's all I that's all I got right now. Okay, I think we're ready to kind of just get into it then. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Who keeps giving Joss Whedon work, man? <laughs> God damn! Every time, like, there's a back shot of Diana. Oh, I'm sorry, Natasha. It's just some porn shot, like, like above her ass. And I know you can't help not having a back shot of Diana. Oh, sorry, Natasha. At some point. But literally, they're all from the ground looking up her asshole. (laughs) It's, uh, yeah. There's quite a few ass shots in this movie. Like, the first time I was, uh, you know, I kind of chuckled to myself. I was like, oh, that's literally just the shot of Gal Gadot's ass in Justice League. Then it just kept happening and happening and happening. And I was like, there's no taste to it. You know, there's, it's all the same porn shot. So, like, are you saying she was, like, ashamed of it or... Oh, I doubt Scarlet. Well, I know Scarlett Johansson's just always hated just, you know, how men have questioned her about, you know, her underwear and shit like that in the interviews and stuff. But I feel like, you know, she's always loved this character mm-hmm. of Diana. I'm sorry, Natasha. <laughs> but, no, I wouldn't say it's something where she felt, like, degraded. It's just... You know, it's kind of hilarious how many times there's, like, an ass shot of her in this film. But something that definitely didn't work for me was the character of Elena. I thought she was pretty bland. I wasn't really captivated by the actress's performance of her. And... When the film asks me to feel things in regards to her character, I just can't. (laughs) I don't think that, you know her role was that important all things considered she's really there to add a lot of depth to Natasha the film tries giving her her own depth but I don't think it lands that well and every time she's in an action scene she just deflates the seriousness of the scene with you know Marvel's trademark quippy humor so her her jokes didn't land for you There was one joke that I think landed, and they just ran with it. They would not stop telling that joke over and over again. She makes a joke, you know, that's... It's not a fourth wall breaky joke. It's just a joke that kind of makes fun of the superhero trope of how Natasha lands, you know, in that, you know, fist pose where her arms, like, extended like that, and it looks, you know, badass or whatever. There's a joke about that, and yeah, Deadpool did the superhero landing joke first, but... Still, it's a fine joke, and I thought it was actually written well. But they just keep making that joke over and over again, and it's just, it definitely overstays its welcome. But as far as just her humor in general, I don't think any of it landed, because you see very serious moments, and she's just like, oh, what a happy landing. Like fucking Ewan McGregor. Uh, did she say that? No. Okay, I was gonna say. But, like, there's a scene where she's, like, flying a helicopter, smacking into stuff, and she's like, mm, sorry. <laughs> you know, very, very hokey mm-hmm. bullshit that, like, definitely should not have been in the film. Keep it a little serious. And, and I'm only so upset about that because, like, it's a huge betrayal to the tone that's, like, been established, which I thought was absolutely perfect. It just seems like, you know... The tone was too risky for Marvel and Disney overlords to really just let exist. So they're like, you have to pepper these jokes throughout. You have to deflate all the tension. Yeah, you have to keep it a little lighthearted. Keep it fun. Keep it, you know. We have to be quasi, you know, (laughs) kid-friendly. Even though women are having forced hysterectomies. (laughs) You know, like... So yeah, wasn't a fan of Elena, especially by the end of the film. It's just, I wanted her gone. (laughs) You know, I just, I was like, I don't care. Just get the fuck off the screen. You know, if, you know, Natasha can fucking go back to the Avengers, you know, that, that can be her one family now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Fuck this family. Yeah. Fuck the other family (laughs) because of Elena. (laughs) Um, but Speaking again about kind of the ending and the finale, I did not buy the climax. Probably the worst CGI I've ever seen in an MCU film. And I'm trying to be 
forgiving of it because, yeah, this was definitely filmed at a time where even with $200 million, it's very unprecedented times. COVID definitely did a number on the entertainment industry, and I'm glad that movie theaters are clinging on. But you can really start to see where just the actual filmmaking, the craft of the film, and the VFX took a hit, too. Working at home's not cutting it anymore, guys. You know, if we're going to be pumping $200 million to films, they better look like $200 million films. Sorry. I don't know. I, I just think you got a little desensitized to it because there was a lot of action in the film. But I, don't I, don't, see. I don't know. I swear the finale looked like a fucking PS3 game to me. Like, even Black Widow herself, when she was, like, just flying in a Saints Row the Third scenario. Okay, I will say She the... looked like just... Just a computer-generated, like, playback on a chroma key screen. Well, I mean, yeah, like, the that sequence, like, was a little ridiculous. It was but, absurd, like, that but... entire, like, just... As soon as, like, the mo the mechanism happens I'm trying to keep it spoiler free as soon as the mechanism happens that causes the thing to do the thing <laughs> that's when she just looks like complete video game shit <laughs> I don't think it, I don't think it's quite that much of a, a hit but I don't know it definitely looked really bad to me and it just kind of looked worse on a big movie theater screen there was a moment involving Elena in that moment that I l almost laughed my ass off just because of how bad the green screen to the blue screen was. You could see almost the glow. Well, well, not like, you know, the color glow, but just, you know, just... when really bad green screen happens, you can tell when just, you know, the like the outline looks very different than the background. You see... Scarlett Johansson's character do so much shit in this film that she survives and you have to wonder like are you sure you don't have any superpowers cause damn yeah some of the some of the stuff they go through they probably should have died At absolutely come she, out more than with just a scrape on your arm and bleeding a little bit she but. gets blown up like five fucking times inside of like a car or just you know a very small space mm -hmm crashes a car like, falls 30 mountain. feet <laughs> on her legs doesn't break them <laughs> like you have to suspend your disbelief quite a bit for this film near an explosion i mean yeah it's it, it, it does get quite absurd a bit but but just yeah i can't get past the climax and how much i didn't like it <laughs> like the fucking world is super threatened here on the level of you know winter soldier yeah, and where then, everyone criticized it for was like, where's the Avengers? And obviously, with the story, you can't ask where's the Avengers because we know where the Avengers are. But just the implication that there's this world-ending threat here that Natasha single-handedly takes care of with her family, and it's never brought it's up. It's never ever mentioned. ever brought up, mentioned, acknowledged. It's like it didn't happen, and it didn't until they made this movie. Yeah, so. it, it's very much something you can definitely tell where. They took a lot of care to make sure it wasn't like Wonder Woman 1984 where events just were said to have happened that are so unbelievable and stupid that you have to ask why nobody talks about them. But still, why does nobody talk about the events that happened in Black Widow? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I'd say that's pretty much it about what didn't work for me. Um... But like I said, some of those annoyances really, really, really lessen my enjoyment of the film a lot. So, if we're done being misogynist, women-hating, MCU hater bitches. Well, I actually like the film. I had issues with it, but I still liked it. So, it's not my favorite MCU film at all, but... But it's not my least favorite either. To so. say it's not my favorite MCU film would be quite the understatement. <laughs> well, that's fine. It wasn't a bad movie. Mm -hmm. Far from being a bad movie. But I wouldn't say it was good. Yeah, I'd say good. Not great, not amazing. Just. just I'll say good. it was decent. A decent kind of good time. 
but it should have been great, especially because of the premise of, for me, that's even more disappointing, so take that for what you will. Mm -hmm. But I think we're ready to rate this thing. Okay. <sighs> you almost done with your little nachos? Not even close, but that's okay. I'll just, I'll finish it later. Before we rate the movie, would you like to rate your nachos? Your grande nachos from the 82nd nacho. Street Taco Bell? That Taco Bell's terrible. <laughs> Slow. They didn't give me a, any silverware. I need. I've gotten my order wrong a few times. Anyway, um, I told you to rate the nachos, not the location, Terry. Well, okay, the nachos itself. Um, it's pretty good. I like all the meats, the cheeses. Uh, I like the. I'm not a huge fan of guacamole, so I wish I did get that. <laughs> I love guacamole though. I'm sorry, but I just don't like it. Did you like it more or less than Black Widow? <laughs> um, Be uh, honest with yourself. Was, was that a more fulfilling experience, eating those nachos, than watching this movie? Hmm. Which well, was more bang for your buck, would you say? Well, I paid more for Black Widow, so... Um, hmm. All right, I guess I gotta be honest. The this was more worth more of my money because I would at least order this again. But you wouldn't want to see Black I, Widow in theaters again? Not in theaters, no. Yeah, definitely not in theaters. I'd Absolutely. probably stream it again, or probably stream it. Or it's very much a movie I plan on owning someday. You know, especially since I own every other MCU film. Yes, you do. Um, not sure if it's clear or not. I haven't seen any of the shows, though, on Disney+. Plus, So, just thought I'd throw that out there for the context of where we're coming from. I don't really have a way to watch them. I'm interested in them. Especially WandaVision, because... Yeah, it looks really good. Loki looks really good, too, but I'm especially interested in WandaVision, but... <sighs> yeah, I would not recommend going to see this movie in theaters. I just don't think it's worth your time and money seeing it in theaters but I do recommend you see it like on a streaming service like Disney Plus I think it's only available on Disney Plus actually so yeah it's there's no way it's gonna be on Netflix or yeah so, that, so give Disney your money <laughs> give Disney your money now to see Black Widow as far as I'm concerned I would say do not go to pay to see this in theaters I think it is worth watching on Disney Plus I'll even say I think it's worth buying, not brand new. I don't think it's worth spending $25 the day it comes out on Blu-ray. But it's worth watching, just especially if you're an NCU fan. You've stuck it out this long. It's very nice to have that resolution for her character, I'd say. To see her one last time. I mean, if you're looking for... Black Widow movie, it's you could do a lot worse. Yeah, if you're looking for a Black Widow movie, you have gotten a Black Widow movie. Here you go. <laughs> but I just don't think the end product was all that. It could have been more. Could have been. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure people might like it. I just, I think it's very telling that the theater we went to, especially at the end, just it didn't have a lot of approval. So we'll see where that ends up going or what Disney decides to do after getting some feedback. Not sure what it'll be looking like, mm. but I think I'm ready to rate this thing if you are, Tyrick. Yeah, I would say so, but I think you should give your rating first. Well, isn't there something you wanted to share with the audience about where you're coming from with your rating system? Um, I'm going to do it probably based on just... A number score, one, zero, one to ten. Um, just, uh, just because a movie receives lower than an eight doesn't make it a bad movie. Yeah, we're not IGN. We're not gonna fucking fire our writers for having, you know, a critical review of an episode of Loki that people are gonna just demand get taken down. So we bow down and take it down even though we're IGN we have no thought process of our own we hired other people as an outlet to do our thinking for us <laughs> so yeah just try not to be mad at him when he gives it a movie like 
a believable score and not give every movie at least an 8 or a 9. No, because, like, those are, like, those are, like, top great movies. In fact, I, I would rarely, rarely give a movie a 10 out of 10. I think I've only given one movie a 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. If you're unfamiliar with how I rate movies, I do it on a star system. A movie can earn up to five stars, but if it earns one star, that's me saying that I think it's a solid film, like it's a decently made film. If it's a film that I recommend you just do not see, it'll get a score of a thumbs down below it. And if a movie somehow manages to be like that, but much, much worse in every way, where there is basically nothing to redeem itself, it gets a Studio Squad certified poop. <laughs> so, on that note, what are you going to give this movie on your rating system? You know, I was thinking between two numbers, and I think I'm going to be a little nice. I think I'll go with a six. I was deciding between a five and a six. I'll go with a six. Are you going to do decimals? Or are you just going to do it as a whole number? No, just a whole number. Just a whole number? Alrighty. I'm going to give it a star. I was thinking of giving it two, but it didn't sit with me well enough. I think it should have earned at least two stars. It should have been a movie I recommended everyone see in theaters and buy brand new on Blu-ray, but that's not where we're at. We have a movie that, all things considered... I'd say is just barely above lackluster. It's definitely not the lowest low of the MCU, but like it definitely should have been a lot better than it was. So, with that said, it was nice being back or, you know, whatever you want to look at it. Mm -hmm. Starting of a brand new series that's essentially the same. It's called a soft reboot. <laughs> We're soft rebooting the fresh from the theater experience for a, a young contemporary audience. But we're going to keep it exactly the same to not alienate the original fans. Old and new. It's mm -hmm. perfect. So with that said, thank you so much for watching this review. Sticking it out this long. I'm sure it was just as hard, if not way harder than sticking out like the entire 24 film, now 25 film MCU saga. So, with that said, go ahead and catch y'all next time. Peace. <laughs>